Hello, we're here to talk about writing a resume if you are a nurse's assistant or some similar profession. And some resumes have specific formats. I'd like to show you a few of those formats and start all that off though by letting you know that the purpose of the resume is not to tell everybody everything about you, but to really to get the interview. And that would mean that your resume would give enough information to entice somebody to call you in for a specific interview. People do tend to not spend very much time, frankly, reading a resume, somewhere between 8 and 20 seconds, so you do want to make sure that your information is clear and concise and presents yourself to the reader in such a way that they would want to bring you in for a more extensive interview. So that said, let's take a look at an outline of a resume for a nurse's assistant or similar profession and see what the key elements are that you would expect to see in that resume. First, of course, you would have a name and whatever titles you have at this point, and your contact information, including street address, city, state, zip code, email, home phone, and cell phone. Recognizing that cell phone is, needs to be distinguished as such because people are more likely to call you on a cell phone these days because they think they're more likely to get you at any time of the day. So it's important also to keep your cell phone on as much as possible unless you're in a place where it really just shouldn't be on in a movie or something like that because you never know when you'll get a call from somebody that could be an interview. And we would want to see your education and training at the top here as well. Schools that you've attended and then your professional experience. What organization have you worked at or are you working at now? Where is that in terms of city and state and the years that you were there? And then it is a description of the specific position and the activities that you've done within that position and any significant accomplishments that you might have done within that position. And those can be anything from you know, receiving awards you know, for patient care or whatever it is within your organization, but anything that's significant that really frankly stands out. And then, this actually would be the top of page two right here, you would want to see your name again and the page number and the phone. And if you had jobs previous to the one where you are now or most recently left, you would similarly include or under continuation of professional experience the organization, the location, the years that you worked there, and again the description of the position and the activities. Similarly significant accomplishments in that particular position. And if you've had other positions at other places, please include those as well. You do want to have a continuous timeline from your education all the way up to the present. If you have any other awards or honors, this is a good place to put them. And then also your current professional data, any medical licensures that you have, any specialty certifications that you have, and other certificates. And I personally like to see some personal information on a resume, such as community involvement or hobbies and leisure activities. And the reason I say that is the person reading the resume may have some similar hobbies or similar leisure activities, and that can actually form the basis for a good conversation in an interview. Say you were both interested in, I don't know, in running, something like that. So that's why I say it's a good idea to put what your personal activities are on the bottom of, of the last page. And this should be no more than two pages, by the way, as a limit on size. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention.